Rob Schilling. Joe, thank you so much. I'm proud to be your friend. And Gabriel Schilling. And Gabriel's here by my side. You know, he's been coming to these events since he was eight weeks old. We started bringing him to the Republican Breakfast in uh, Charlottesville, Albemarle. And so he's grown up the right way. I want to thank you all just for being here today. I know there's many other things that you could have done, but this is so important. What's more important than freedom? And that's what I'm going to talk about today, is freedom and the loss of it in America and how we can get it back. And you know, for many years there have been freedom-loving conservatives that have been too busy to come to events like this because things were going okay in America. And then all of a sudden we had a wake-up call. And people have woken up across this country, which is a wonderful thing to see. And we know now that it's critical to care, that for all those years when we thought everything was going okay, it wasn't. And there were people behind the scenes who were working very, very hard to take away from you the things that the Constitution gave you in order to empower themselves in what I would call an evil way. And so what are we facing today? Well, we've got a federal government, and we have somebody in charge of the federal government that doesn't recognize the U.S. Constitution, and I mean that in two ways. They do not recognize the document if they looked at it because they probably haven't spent a lot of time with it and they don't recognize the legality of that document. We've got two senators in Virginia who appear to be far more interested in party preservation than they do in doing what's right and what's correct in promoting the general welfare of citizens and this nation. And we've got, you, many of you are lucky enough not to have, but we've got down in Charlottesville a congressman who despises and insults his constituents by saying things like, the only people who were against cap and trade were oil executives, Saudi princes, and lobbyists. That was our representative, Tom Perriello, who said that about people who were not in favor of cap and trade. Can you imagine the disdain with which our government officials are treating us today? And all of you gathered here, and I'm looking over at Bill Hay, who is the leader of the Tea Party movement here locally. All of you here have been maligned, and we've seen it in the newspaper, and we've heard it on the radio, and we've seen it on the TV news with the names of haters and rednecks, idiots, racists, extremists, and now even terrorists. That's what you've been called. But see, I know better because you're my friends, and I've been with you at all of these events, and it's simply not true, but it's what people are saying in order to denounce this movement, this freedom movement. You know, there was a time in America, and many of you will remember it, and I remember my parents talking about this concept of being too proud to accept charity. Now, we always know that there are people who need help, but that help didn't always come from the government. It came from your family, your friends, and your neighbors. And that's what we've gotten away from now. Everyone is depending upon the American federal government in order to provide for them, and that's not healthy for the nation. It's creating a lot of problems. And what I have seen across America is a new declaration, but it's not the Declaration of Independence that Tom Sloniker read so well for us on July 4th at the Tea Party event. It is the Declaration of Dependence. The Declaration of Dependence on government. And it makes me ill to see it. We have what I call indoctrination hostages. These are kids in American government schools who are being indoctrinated to graduate from school with their mouths open and their hands out. And I think of baby birds sitting in a nest, calling for themselves to be fed. And that is who's graduating from our schools today. Not everybody, your kids are not, but people who are not paying attention to what's going on, their kids are. And that unfortunately is the vast majority. And the mentality has extended itself throughout the American nation. So now we're trusting in government instead of trusting in God. That is, in fact, a violation of the First Commandment, if we ever thought about that. We just as soon pick our neighbor's pockets as opposed to working for it ourselves and being responsible for our own condition. So you see people, you see people in government who are pandering toward those who need, and where they want to get it, they want to get it from those who have. And then they're making all of the people who vote for them dependent upon them to vote for them the next time. That is creating a culture of dependency, not independence. It's diametrically opposed to the Declaration of Independence. And by the way, that is a violation. That's coveting. That's a violation of the Tenth Amendment. We need to keep, we need to keep this in mind. Our declared unalienable rights, you remember those? They're slowly being exchanged for as 
supervisor, Albemarle County supervisor, declared the public trough and how people are going to the public trough. And we have people elected in government now who are talking about finding a pot of money or finding a tree with some money on it or going to the public trough. It's a disgusting way to describe the citizens of the United States of America as being pigs who would go to a trough and eat. But that's now what elected officials in this area are saying. And prosperity and success in America are now considered by many people on the left to be evil in this place that was built upon people being able to be prosperous and wealthy, the greatest nation that God has ever seen because of our independence. That's now considered an evil by many. And so we've twisted the Constitution to find rights that never existed, like the right to health care, where it's not there. And we're doing things like trying to use taxes to correct people's behavior. So if you're not eating the right foods or if there's too much sugar in the food, we're going to tax it so that you don't do it anymore. And that's what America's become today. We're looking at rationing health care. And who do you think is going to be the first sent out on the ice flows like the Eskimos used to do? Well, it's going to be people who are older because their votes are already behind them, the majority of them. And that's what it's coming to in America today. You know, we used to understand that the first line of defense in America was the family, friends, church, and community. And I want us to get that back because now the place we go is straight to the federal government in Washington, D.C. And there are enough politicians out there who don't know the meaning of the word freedom and liberty who are going to pander to everybody who says they need something and they'll find a way to get it to them. But the price that you pay is your freedom. And it's not worth it. Americans know that there are those who truly need our help, and we've never, ever hesitated to give a hand. We help our neighbors. That's the sort of people that we are. But when government takes up the role of private charity, that's when private charity ceases to exist. And I've seen it happen where people told me, you know what? The government's taxing me for that, so I'm no longer giving it to the church, or I'm no longer giving it to the charity, because the government already took it, and they're doing it. And that's the goal, again, to make them dependent, to make people dependent upon the federal government for everything. You know, America was formed by people who did not want to be dependent. I recently read an amazing book called Animal Colony, and I would suggest that you all get a copy if you can. It was kind of like Animal Farm, but it retold the story of why people came to America and what happened to America over the course of years when people got lazy and people got dependent upon government. My wish for you and for every single American is that you can be truly independent. That's what I want. When I was an elected government official, I never tried to get more power for the government. I tried to give it away and give it back to people. And that was the sole reason for my, my time on the city council in Charlottesville. And in spite of being outnumbered, I was successful in some ways by bringing an elected school board to the city. But that was just a small thing. We need to do that across the country. And I want you to live freely with the least amount of government intervention in your lives as possible, the very least. And that's what we need to work towards. That every person could prosper freely in your own way. Not the way that somebody coerces you to, but the way that you can. Financially, yes, but more important in happiness and fulfillment. Because we don't need to be material, materially rich in order to be happy. But we have to remember that we're, if we are indentured to our government as we are becoming more so every single day, that we're going to be poor in every way. You know, America stands at a crossroads right now and we can go one of two ways. Before we take another step away from freedom and into bondage, let's recall the prophetic words of Thomas Jefferson. We sit in his cradle right now. That a government big enough to supply everything you need is big enough to take everything you have and they've already begun. <laughs> Together and through individual voices, because we all have a voice, let's work to preserve and honor the Republic and to promote true freedom wherever and whenever possible. And I thank you for letting me address you today. Thanks so much.